Hey, welcome back to episode number two on my Electron series. In today's episode, we're going to look at the basics of using Electron. We're going to build a simple timer app. We're going to use no uh, notifications and a few other things. I just want to start by mentioning my t-shirt. Um, this is not a paid endorsement of any kind. I wear these t-shirts in all my, uh, a number of my videos. I have received them for free. Um, if you'd like to send me a free t-shirt, I'm all, all good for that too. Um, just comment below or message me somehow and uh, I'll give you uh, somewhere to send it. Um, but let's get started. So, if you look at my screen, we're going to uh, actually use the Electron Quick Start based on the tutorials. So, they're actually electron.atom.io is their website. Here we're looking at it now. And they have a really good documentation, except it just covers, um, they have a few tutorials, and it also just covers like each element of Electron. and doesn't actually cover anything related to Node or anything like that, so we're going to take a look at that. First up, you'll need to have his Node installed on your computer. And we're also going to take a look at this. It's called github.com slash electron slash electron quick start. And it's what we're going to use to get started because it provides you with a bare minimum application and ver verifies that everything's properly installed and everything else like that. So you can just clone it. Um, so I'm going to do that. Copy this line. You need to have git installed as well. So if you don't have that, go to git c uh, sorry, scm.com and you can install git. I'm going to switch over to my desktop. I have to remember that. Uh, the tops and the bottoms get cut off on here, so um, increase the size of this, but not so much that it'll get cut off. I'm gonna clear it. Okay, so now I'm on my desk. I'm gonna do a git clone, or I'm not gonna do a git clone because I already copied. Okay, and so I have the Electron Quick Start, and the next instruction is to do an npm install. Now, I've done this before and I've had issues, and you may have to do an npm install g uh, and then electron. So, when this is done installing, I'll show you what that is. And this is because I had some issues with um, installing electron. I also had to throw in uh, sudo for, a reason, for some reason. But that was just one case of it, in case you run into that, covering that basis. So, as you can see, all the packages are properly installed. Now, we're just going to npm start. And it's going to start up an electron app. As you can see down, um, you probably can't see my menu bar because it gets cut off, but um, I have this Electron app right here. And I have this Hello World in the center, and it tells you what you know, version of Node you're using. Because it runs a Node, it runs a local version of Chromium, Chromium, and then it also runs Electron. And so this is your basic Hello World app. You can't get any simpler than that. So. Here we go. We've, we've, we've created the first thing. You've built your first Electron app. The next thing we're going to do is actually explore the code for the quick start. So I'm going to open up Atom. I mean, it's only fair to use Atom because Electron, um, you know, even even the website, but I'm saying like, GitHub made Electron and they also made Atom. And I think they made Atom with Electron. So it's only fair to use Atom, you know? Um, and so I'm going to go to my desktop. I've now opened up the quick start with Atom, um, and if you look, I have my index.html file here, hello world, the title, the content here, and it requires a renderer.js. You have two files, you have the renderer.js and you have the main.js. You look at the actual website, um, it will give you a proper explanation of the differences. Um, yeah, so the main is is the script that runs all the main pro uh, processes that can be displayed on the GUI, and then run the renderer is the actual content within the web page. Um, you can read more about the differences here on the website. But the point is, if I change hello world to hello world 2, and I get rid of all this, you will see that it will, it will change if you do another npm start. Hello World 2. So, and then here, this is where we're creating the window. This is the main.js file. You know, create window. We can, provide, we can look up in the API docs a number of instructions that they provide to update this window here. Uh, create window, create window height. They don't put semicolons on the end of the things, which I do. Um, so, height, and then I can change this if I want to. I can say, I'll make it a perfect square. Kill that and restart that. I'm just doing Command C there, and as you can see, it's the full height there. 
And you can do things like, you know, find the actual window width and thing, uh, things like that. So, that's basics. Now we got to figure out how to communicate pretty much between Atom and, and the renderer process because you have to sometimes pass data through them. So this, the, this you'll use something called the IP, IPC and to start by standing up in the main. I have my instructions over here, that's why I kind of look, keep looking over here. So if you do constant IPC main equals electron dot IPC main. I really, I really use semicolon, so. And then um, down here I can say IPC main dot on some sort of key value, so um, this is supposed to be unique, you know, if you're doing X, Y, and Z, you put X, Y, and Z in there, and console.log slash event, oh, sorry, I want to put in arg, and then I'm just going to put on key, IPC, and uh, just so you know that's an IPC message, I'm going to put that in there. And so then, what you'll need in the renderer process is a a button because there's no. Um, so we're gonna do with text um, input text type text and then we're gonna do ID no ID send the box. I'm gonna add a button. Do the button ID send message. Main button. Okay, so one thing though is you'll need to actually. I'm I'm gonna add um, jQuery, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because we don't actually have. Um, I want to be able to listen for the events happening on the index page. So if I do go back here and I do npm install jQuery and then dash s, which is going to save to my package JSON file. It's going to install jQuery. So my package JSON file is going to change. Should have changed. NPM jQuery dash try dash dash save for some reason I didn't save there there now it's saved it just changed there so that was uh, npm install dash dash save jQuery. Uh, it took a while there, but it eventually came through. And so what we'll have to do is now in the renderer process, um, listen to listen to this button. So this involves doing the following: a little um, jQuery, and then saying click, and then function, and then saying send. do is create a function for that as well. So it's send box. So Gets us the value, so in the message, and then we're going to do console.log sending console.log message, and then here we're going to send it using IPC render dot send key on message, so the exact same key as what we have in the event, and then here message. I mean, you can only do you only need to um, have one. And this is just more for documentation, so you can see how it kind of works. But the one thing we're missing is this dollar sign and this IPC renderer. We have to import them because they do not exist yet. So we want to do var dollar sign global j 
jQuery. This brings it in from the Electron Library. So, um, seems to be good, but let's test it out. So, do a npm start again. Launches the app. We have Hello World. Now, this is an internet browser. This is like Chromium is an internet browser, and the idea is they've taken away everything, as I mentioned in my previous video. So, here it is. You can go actually go to do toggle developer tools, the same as you can do in like Chrome or something. You can see the console. So what we're going to do is type in test, and hit send, and as you can see, we go through the proper it's sending test, and then as you could see in my console, as it popped up afterwards, it says coming from, and then it's our message coming from IPC main, and that's sending data from the renderer to the main. Now it's the it's our job to do the opposite, and that involves sending um, content from the main to the renderer. That involves going to our main file, and let's just say on on the create window, we want to, we want to tell the renderer that I don't know, the, the the window's been created. I don't know why you would have to do that, but <laughs> it's just a demo. Um, so we want to do uh, center. I actually don't know how to do it from uh, exactly. Uh, just it's always good just to give it to Google here. Render window dot web contents that send some message. And so we can do this because we have actual main here. So let's do it right here. And then on the renderer we have to catch this. So IPC renderer dot on Info, I think it was the key. Vent. Renderer, I'm going to do here. It's a console log, and then we'll log the arguments. The last thing I'm going to explain is, um, in the main, they actually give you some starting stuff for this quick start. If you uncomment this, this opens up the inspector element, like right off the bat, which is actually what we want just for development. Do not leave this on for when you actually go to uh, package up your app, because, I mean, they're going to have um, access, like they're going to open up the dev, dev tools first right away. So, we're going to do our npm start again, or command c first, and then npm start. Dev tools open up. Um, our thing did not work properly because the send didn't work. So now we gotta figure out why the send didn't work. <laughs> what main window dot web contents dot send info. I think it's just where I have this positioned is why it's not going to work. So, 
main windows I can access from anywhere. So here, I'm gonna say on active. Try this. Should I add some console log to see what's going on here? See why um, the ordering of the create. Here's one. Okay, it's a, it never gets to here zero zero two. I think I just put this in the wrong spot. We'll try it. We'll try the ready instead. Remove that and then try again. I mean, I think based on the description of this element here, it's only if it recreates the uh, the window. So I got zero zero two. Okay, I'm having an issue triggering it, but I'm pretty like I'm. I know this works. So, what I'll say is, if you have find a reason why you need a path from main to render, um, use it. But realize that you have to have the renderer loaded before you send it from main to the renderer, which is the issue I'm facing right now. So, um, I mean, I could do this. I could say. On close, right? Because when I close the window, it should, the renderer should be still around. Logic has been destroyed. Line forty-one of main. Okay, my this here. It's 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 not gonna work, but um. That's how that's how you do it. So it, I know I know it works. And I know it's it's bad to post a video that it, it's not working, but I I know it works. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay. So now we're gonna actually add in a timer and with notifications. And so the way it's gonna work is um, we're gonna create a new notification um, just with our existing qu uh, Quick Start app, and then from there we'll implement and act, we'll restart the whole Quick Start, and we'll actually build out the entire timer. Um, so we're going to take a look at our renderer and we're going to try this new notification based on the documentation and it's going to have a title and a body and has a number of parameters and you can look them all up but Let's just try this. Um, I've never actually done this, so we're going to try it out. NPM start. And we just got a notification. Perfect. So our timer will just work. You know, you get the halfway, it'll just do uh, you need to hurry up and finish your edit, or and so on. So um, we can actually catch the clicks as well and things like that. Um, so let's just um, we'll do that. And so now we're gonna actually start building out our timer. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna get back to you on this one because um, it, it has passed. I gotta get going, but.